Let me turn off chat, actually, so we don't get distracted by that. Where is that anyway? Probably chat settings. Okay. Uh, this is my first YouTube video in a couple of months. Uh, also my first computer engineering related one. This is uh, my CPU that I'm building in Minecraft. Uh, it's loosely based off of the Harvard architecture. Um, and that is all the ROM. Uh, it has no uh, instruction set. Uh, it is literally, you put in the bits, the bits do the thing, this does the thing. Um, I think we calculated this as like 4,196 bytes, because it's two layers, 40-something long, another something wide. I don't know the exact specifications for it, but two layers of program ROM. And then this decoder I stole and expanded from a um, RAM decoder, which I also use down here. Harvard architecture, uh, it's down here. I'll show you that to you now. I think it's this one. This is what we had planned out originally. Uh, and then the RAM is under there. But this is what we got. Uh, we have actually ditched the accumulator design. Um, and just have input registers, which is kind of worse and more difficult, but I'm used to them, so it's fine. I turn enabled, we have the sub registers over there, going into the ALU. ALU feeds down below this into the, um, RAM, which is that pink thing right there. Uh, and then I think this is, yeah, register bank. We are not going to have one of these things, I don't think. Um, we may add it in later, but not a lot of room right now. Um, the RAM basically takes that thing's place, so who cares? We have, I think it's 8 bytes of RAM, I want to say. 8 bytes or 16 bytes. I think it's 8 bytes of RAM, um, which is a number of bits. I'm so tired, I can't calculate right now. And then, of course, our ROM, which ended up being a lot wider than we thought it was going to be, but who cares? This has enough lines uh, to put, like, a 100th of Doom on there. So if you want, like, a very small part percentage of Doom. Uh, it's going to have a, I want to say, 4-bit opcode, I think, with everything added in. Maybe 3 bits, I don't know. But we're definitely not going to need to use both lines. This is probably going to, from like this point on, will just all be I.O., uh, which is nice. Uh, the ALU is an instant carry adder, which uses uh, crazy Minecraft logic to work. I, I did not build it myself. I got the design, um, it was in just an adder. Uh, and then myself and my friend added all the bitwise functions. So we got, uh, I added the flood A and flood B. Um, we have flood carry, carry in, uh, XOR to OR, which of course gives us XOR powers. Um, there's more. We, we have register bank bypass. Yeah, this register banks is basically just the RAM. We got all the stuff, does all the things. Here is our current. Quote unquote instruction is flood A, flood B. These two should be labeled as. Oh, wait, did I label them wrong? I might have labeled flood A and flood B wrong. Hold on, let me follow this line. Uh, no, we're good. Okay, just making sure. Let's wire this up over here. Um, It's got a difference of about one tick delay from there to there. Uh, all these orange lines are are our um, input numbers for both A and B inputs. The uh, issue with this is that it takes inputs vertically like this. You have, this would be A8, that would be B8. So we had to do a bit of finagling to get the registers to all fit, but they fit. So it's fine. These are registers. They're not quite full registers. There is... I think we're missing an enable, but it's fine. It's basically always reading or always writing. Uh, but this allows us to do basic multiplication. Um, there is no instruction set, of course, so it has to be done completely manually, which is why we have 4,096 bits of it, so it's fine. Um, yeah, that's it. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then, of course, it's labeled all here. We have our 1B, 2B, 4B, 8B, all the way down to 16B. Uh, this fifth line here is reserved on both sides for the registers. I believe it is the uh, read bit, and, or not read bit, it's the read and write. Uh, it doubles the same thing. 
whenever it's not writing, it's reading. And yeah, this is a clock that I also did not design, um, but it works pretty well. You can single step it, you can multi step it. It runs up to, I think, I want to say 5 hertz. Don't know. Let's see if there's credits here. No, there isn't. I lied. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's got all the stuff. And basically, if you hook this up to a clock, it runs. We can actually do that now if you want to. Um, but yeah, you can also say which lines to jump to and when. Where is it right now on the on the sequence? I don't know. Let's uh, plug a clock into it, though, and show you it running. This will probably have conditional jump statements um, and flags and stuff, but I'm tired. We'll do that later. Uh, watch as incompetent young man tries to figure out how a redstone clock works. This is not going to be how the clock works in the actual thing, but it, you know, it's how it works here, so screw you. Okay, let's make that a bit longer so you can actually see it stepping. Cool. And it's, it's ticking along. You can see it doing the thing. Let's see if we can find where it's going to. It would take a long time to find normally, but... If we can't find it, then we can't find it. It's probably back at the start. There it is. So yeah, it steps from line to line. This is probably going to be the speed that it reads uh, the ROM at. Maybe it can probably go a bit faster. But, uh, we do have to account for the difference in tick delays for both those, just because of how I built it. I'll probably add instant repeaters to make that uh, negligible, but it'll cap us out at, I think, less than a hertz, uh, probably... Close to a one hertz though, which would be nice. And this, of course, executes two ROM lines at the exact same time. Um, just kind of strange. We would never use two. I don't even know why we have two lines if they both operate or execute at the exact same time. Yeah, that's fine. Who cares? It definitely gives us a lot more options, and you can do two things at the same time. Technically, um, I might pipeline this. Probably not. It's pipelineable, I think. Haven't tried, but yeah, that's it. What's left to do on the checklist um, includes finishing up wiring, and then we need a display of some kind. I'll probably grab a display signal from these four. Actually, no. I will not because that's stupid. Ah, hmm. Actually, no. I'll just grab display from, from these guys, because this ALU output legit just goes right back into the ALU input. Um, yeah, so this is the register bypass, I forgot to mention that. Um, so we can probably, whenever you want to read, or whenever you want to display, turn on register bypass, and then shoot this stuff out up to there to be read uh, by a 7 segment. When this is on, all it does is take the output right back into the input right here. So this would probably be a fast way to do multiplication. When this is off, uh, this signal instead travels down to here, where it can then be set to a certain address, and then read from that address. These decoders, if they seem similar, that's because they are. They're from here. So this is a lot more bits than that is. Uh, yeah, that's the CPU. Loosely based off Harvard architecture. Not accumulator based, because I am stupid. And very tired, and it has no instruction set because be a man figured out. <laughs> um, this will probably be done within a month. It's not that big of a project, um, but I'll show it to you whenever I finish it. Sorry for the lack of videos recently, school, other things. You know. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, subscribe. If you didn't subscribe, I don't care. Subscribe. My channel's dying anyway because. I had an influx of subs who never watched my videos, so if you're one of the 25 who do, thank you. You are why I made this video in the first place. Okay, that's it. Uh, yeah, pretty much. See ya.